Hey guys, today we're going to be learning about the polynomial remainder theorem. It's pretty easy, so let's dive into it. It's very simple to understand, and it has to do with, as the name suggests, the remainder of a polynomial. How do you compute the remainder of a polynomial in a more easier, in, a, in an easier way? So, basically what this, pol this theorem says is that if you have a polynomial, let's say, for example, x squared, uh, plus 10x minus 5 and let's say we're dividing it by x minus 2 how much is the remainder of this division? one thing we could do is of course use synthetic division and find the third value that we get because this is a linear term so we know our third value is our remainder but something we can do is use the polynomial remainder theorem to do it way easier. So in this case, this, this, uh, this theorem states that for this polynomial that we're going to call p of x, that is being divided by x minus a, a in this case being equal to 2, the remainder is going to be remainder there, our remainder, I'm sorry, the remainder is going to be equal to the polynomial evaluated at a, okay? It's pretty simple. If you have a polynomial that is being divided by a linear term, x minus a, in this case, x minus 2, the remainder of this division is going to be equal to the, uh, if you evaluate the polynomial that you have on top, with this value as an input, okay? It's pretty simple. For a polynomial p of x divided x minus a, the remainder is going to be p of a, okay? Now let's try it with this one. So if we use synthetic division, I'm going to I'm going to erase this and let me write uh, the definition right up here. So if we've got a polynomial p of x being divided by x minus a, its remainder, I'm going to write r, is going to be P of A, okay? Uh, that's actually capital A, but you know, it's P, P of A, the denominator that you have. P of A. So now let's see it. Using synthetic division, just playing with the coefficient, we have 1, 10, and minus 5. If you don't know synthetic division, um, you can go and check my last video. I explained it very easy what all this is. So we have... Uh, minus 5 and we're going to divide by we're going to switch the sign so we get 2 and then just you know how it goes 1 2 2 this is going to be 12 times 24 uh, times 224 add those and you should get is it in negative 5 yes in negative 5 and you should get that the denominator that is the remainder in this case would be equal to should I have gotten yeah it's fine uh, it's going to be 19 okay this is the remainder that we have. Now, let's see if that is true. If we evaluate the function at, uh, at p of 2, well, let's see what we get. So if we say that um, a is equal to 2, then we have 2 squared plus 10 times 2 minus 5. And all of this should be equal to 4 plus 20 minus 5. And that's just going to be equal to, yes, indeed, 24, that's 24, minus 5, which is exactly the operation that we had there. And this is 19. Pretty simple, you see, this polynomial remainder theorem is indeed correct. You can find the remainder of this division using this rule. You have a polynomial divided a linear term with a y-intercept of a, and then what you do is you simply evaluate the polynomial at A and that is going to be your remainder. It's pretty simple, nothing too bad. So let's do some more examples. So let's solve the example that we have here. Now using the polynomial remainder theorem, we know that to find the remainder of this division, we can evaluate this polynomial, which I'm going to find as, as P of X, in, um, we can evaluate it at A, which in this case would be 2. So remainder, I'm, to find, I'm just going to write rem, would be equal to p of a. And in this case, p 
P of A, Juan writing always a capital A. P of A would be equal to, so let's do it. We have 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 3. And this is going to be equal to, we get 4 times 2, 8 plus 8 minus 3. This is equal to 16 minus 3. We know that is 13. So that means that the remainder of this division should be 13. Let's prove that by the uh, synthetic division method. So for our coefficients, we have 2, 4, and minus 3. And we get positive 2 in this case. Remember, you switch the sign. And let's see what we get. We get 2, so you get 4. It's going to be 8. You get 8 times 2, 16. And of course, you get 16 minus 3, that is going to be 13. Your third term is going to be your remainder. So this is your rem. Which means that this polynomial, this theorem is indeed correct. We also got 13 for that, for this method. So it works, as you, ca as you guys can see. Now this is a pretty simple theorem, and it is very useful in exams such as the SAT. You're going to maybe be given a polynomial which you don't know many things about. Maybe you don't even know its coefficients. And you need to say that if you're given a specific denominator, maybe that polynomial is a factor. Or maybe that polynomial has a factor of a specific term, maybe. There are, there are a lot of things that you can do with this polynomial in terms of the algebra behind dividing things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you in the following one.